All right, I believe I got the visual kinks that I intend to iron out, ironed out. I was displaying at an inappropriate resolution, so it was recording at an inappropriate resolution. It didn't look wrong to me while I was playing the game, but was plainly wrong when I was um, watching the video. I'm not going to bother re-recording the original episode, because this show is kind of a low priority for me. Ah, oh, you know what? Don't have a pistol. Oops, wasted a bullet. Whoa! I'm expecting to waste so much ammunition on that, on these two. But, you know, we're, we'll be alright. Ah, don't go this way. There are zombies this way. Had I gone the other way, the way that Barry was supposed to go, I would have been able to pick up a couple more clips and I would be perfectly fine in terms of in terms of ammunition. You know what there really isn't anything this way, I gotta go. I guess maybe that's an a disadvantage of playing as Jill. It kind of expects you or pushes you to a certain extent to go this way. Where you may not have the best chance at finding the ammo you need. Uh, one of the two down. The reason why I wanted to do this was because I Planned back in the main hall. Barry! Jill, what's going on? Any clues? No, but something's wrong with this house. Whoa, this hall is dangerous. Maybe it's better to secure our escape route first. There must be a back door somewhere. Let's try to find it first, shall we? Okay. Let's separate again. Just a moment. I found something. What is it? It's a weapon. It's really powerful, especially against living things. Better take it with you. But how about you, Barry? I have this. Thank you. I'll take this then. Thanks for something I can't use right now, Barry. But you could say it is another advantage of playing as Jill. Barry gives you stuff. He basically gave us a shotgun without completing the... without completing the, um... puzzle for it. Oops. Jeez, I had a Chris run in mind. Uh, there's a small key that would be located there in Chris's run. Another disadvantage of the Chris, he has to pick up small keys if he wants to unlock the desks. Something Jill does not have to do. Another advantage of Jill. She gets the bazooka. Now Chris, to be fair, does get his own weapon that Jill doesn't have, but it's the flamethrower, and the flamethrower only appears for a short period of time, much later on in the game. You only get to have it for a little while because it's part of a puzzle. The puzzle that Jill doesn't have to complete. Alright. 
the bazooka and the acid rounds go together. I think I may not be able to get into here, but I'm thinking, you know, I can't armor key. Now we've completed the right side of the mansion pretty much about as far as we can for the time being. Time to go back to the left. Now, if I'm not too mistaken, that zombie should be dead. I think the arranged version of this... Eh, he's moving. The arranged version of this, um... Game has the zombie get up, returns to this room here, and you'd have to fight him again. So, you gotta be careful about that. This version, though, we're fine. Alright, I got a good healthy supply of ammo. I thought I might have to start using a shotgun or something like that if I wasn't uh, too careful. I, I wanted to play this game. I wanted to finish this. Aside from the fact that I always planned to, I want to go and do like Resident Evil 4 and want to do Zero and the remake of the original one. This one. Which I got all on PC now, thanks to Steam. But I thought, like, you know what? I could go and do that, but what I really wanted to do was finish this first. And I always thought, you know what? I would finish the first Resident Evil at some point. But I never got back to it. Damn it. <laughs> I didn't want to have to kill this one. Come on. Come on. All right. There we go. Perhaps I'm being, like, overly cautious with my ammunition usage. Because especially in Jill's game, it's un it's not that necessary. First time I played through the game, I did eventually run out of bullets, but... It w it's not as bad as Chris's game. In fact, I'm pretty sure... Perhaps even Chris would have had three zombies to deal with in this room instead of just two. So, I mean, they they clearly went way out of the way to make Chris's game harder. I'm not entirely sure, but I think... I think maybe Chris is able to take more of a hit than she is. But if that's true, it's not by a lot. No, Rebecca. What? No explanation as to why Rebecca's just not here right now. But I guess there doesn't really need to be... Oh! Friend right into him. It's one more hit than I was planning on taking on this run. Eh, don't have it. The armor key's just right over here, though, I think.
with a cursed run, you'd have to make your way through this area, and then you'd have to go and find all this crap, then you'd have to go and do this. You'd have to go find this stuff, and then go back over to the other side to get the poison packet. Then do this again. So, another advantage to gel. You can just sort of progress through the game faster. Oh yes, and armor. Well, we're pretty close to at least one of the rooms that you can um, use the key on, so let's do that. Hopefully I won't have to return to this little passage until the hunters are roaming around, so I'm not going to bother killing those zombies in here. If you know where to go, you don't have to... Oh, there's the broken shotgun. <laughs> is there anything else? Oh, a desk. Don't need a small key, because Jill is the master of unlocking. Shotgun shells. Become very useful later on in the game, but Jill is kind of getting... Loaded up with crap she doesn't need at the moment. All right, I'll kill you. Dead. Up, it was a sword key. How'd you get in there? They must have uh, programmed it specifically to go down on four shots. Because that's how many you'd be able to get off before it... If you were he acted immediately, it's how many you'd be able to get off before it latched on to you. And we're back in this room. This weird hallway. Do I... There. Uh, oh, that was a sword key room. Oh. Okay. Might as well complete this puzzle now. Actually, there's a couple of puzzles I can do right now. Ah, damn it. You know what? I can't do the jewel. Because I'm going to need the extra space in my inventory. Why the hell would you pick that up? And Jill can play the damn piano, too. Doesn't have to have Rebecca do it. 
And of course, having Rebecca do it involves a mini puzzle in and of itself. You have to leave, either be gone long enough. There's a mechanic that you run back into the main hall, and if you run around a pillar and come back, she'll be finished. But I get, I bet that they're intending for you to just wander around and eventually come back after you've managed to complete the the loop without knowing it. Majority of this game's story is conveyed through the, um... I mean, there are the small dialogue things that happen here and there. We've seen those. But there are the journals, and that's kind of like, um... Not too many games, I feel like, have done that really well. I feel like Resident Evil here was an early example of a game that, that tried that. And, I mean, I'll leave it up to you to determine how big of a success it was there. I mean, it was a different time. Where games weren't really as complicated and deep in terms of storyline as they are now. So you can't really fault them for trying when there really wasn't a template that they could work with. You now, about ten years later... There was what a lot of people would consider to be the sort of prime example of doing it right, which would be Bioshock, where they had those audio logs that you'd pick up and you'd listen to, and some other games have done that since then. I guess um, Silent Hill did a little bit of that, at least after here. It, it seems to work better with games that have a sort of horror theme to it, because if you have groups of people, you can't... You gotta have dialogue with groups of people. You have groups of people. The game isn't quite as scary, so you gotta rely on some other way of conveying storylines and having characters talk to each other. Of course, the problem with this is you need to have people going and reading! Some people don't like to read shit. In fact, since I know damn well what these things say and earlier on in this series... Which I recorded six years ago, now that I think about it. 2012, I think that was. I don't, I'm not going to bother picking up any of those. Alright, we got the armor key. and the helmet key. So let's get moving. I don't have any kind of um, room in my inventory, so I want to make sure that I finish these. Uh, I, I'm not going to go in there. Not yet, at least. I'll be back in a minute. There are the two magic item boxes you can access in the mansion, and the other one's over on the other side that I don't need to be in anymore. So I don't feel like going... What? Aren't you dead? Or is this the zombie from the other side of the room that they just moved over here? Uh. Ain't that a some bitch? Was there anything in here? I mean, actual items? Or was it just that log book?
Alright, I figure I might as well keep these episodes to around 20 minutes apiece. It won't take me long to hammer through the game at that rate, so I'll end this one here.